Um, now, this uh, probably comes as no surprise that in general, when we're talking about um, management of these lesions, there, you know, we talk about four things. Um, so when I'm talking with a patient, we talk about, okay, do we just watch it, right? To treat or not to treat. Observation is always an option. Um, so that's something that we want to talk about. But then we get into the nitty gritty of what do we have to offer if we think that it needs to be treated. Um, and those are, there are the three uh, general things and then the combination therapy. So we've got open surgical resection um, and there are pluses and minuses to that. You've got end endovascular embolization, um, gluing shut the pedicles, um, either from the arterial or the venous side. And we'll look at both of those. Um, and then sort of stereotactic radiosurgery, gamma knife, cyber knife, whatever it might be. Um, and uh, again, pluses or minuses to each of those. And I think um, different groups have sort of settled on what their practice patterns are, but I think the consensus in the field is that combination therapy is um, very useful. Um, you know, uh, some places are gonna resect everything. Some places are gonna glue everything, but you know, those are probably the extremes. I think that most places are gonna do a little bit of each depending on what the characteristics are and what's best for the patient. And I think that's um, probably the right way to approach um, these lesions, right? There's not a one size fits all um, for these guys. Um, so let's get into a little bit of the nitty gritty of that decision making. So let's start first with, um, uh, with surgery. So uh, in general, historically, kind of grade three has been the break point for surgical risk. Um, you know, meaning on that scale from one to five, the five being the highest um, risk, you know, that's like, uh, those are very, very difficult lesions and often it's not worth the risk of surgery for what you're going to do for the patient if it's an unruptured lesion. Um, grade three has historically been sort of the break point. But then again, not all grade threes are created equal. There are a number of different ways at arriving at a score of three. Size one, uh, venous drainage one, eloquence one versus the size three, uh, venous zero, eloquence zero, right? Th those are inherently different lesions in terms of the amount of brain they span where they're located. Um, so not all grade threes are created equal. And so, uh, you know, having a more nuanced approach uh, can certainly be helpful. And um, as we think about these, that Lawton Young score, supplemental score becomes increasingly important because um, it helps to give us a sort of a finer gradation. And with that one, the threshold is a combined uh, Spetzler Lawton Young score of, um, of about six, right? And, um, uh, Lawton and, and his group have published a number of papers looking at, well, can we get around that number? Should, can we go higher in certain circumstances? And I think the, the answer is probably no. We really don't want to resect these very high-risk lesions. It's just not worth it for the patient, right? And it takes years off the life of the surgeon, let's be honest. Um, these can be hairy lesions for sure. Grade four and five, um, speaking of these higher grade lesions, um, these can be very difficult um, uh, in, in this series uh, from 2003, only 5% were completely resected. Partially treated um, lesions actually did much worse than if you left them alone. So 10% yearly hemorrhage rate, if you tried and didn't get the whole thing out, only 1% if you didn't even try, right? So often these are best left alone, you just observe them. Um, and they're potentially even lower risk than the smaller ones. You know, I, I mentioned the uh, natural history studies showing, you know, two to 3% per year um, in general for AVNs, maybe the larger ones are actually lower risk at about 1%, um, something to consider. There are some indications to treat and sometimes that um, these can be focused treatments, but if there are arterial aneurysms, things that you think are at high risk for bleeding, that's worth going after. If the patient has progressive neurologic deficits, things like a, a steel phenomenon or venous hypertension, that may push you to treat multiple hemorrhages, intractable headaches, uh, or other uh, fixed deficits that uh, that make it so that surgery isn't likely to hurt them as uh, isn't likely to change that as much, shall we say? Okay. Um, this is another paper from our group uh, looking at sort of a, a risk, say, a, a grading system for endovascular uh, consideration. So Spencer Martin, uh, Lawton Young were all uh, conceived with a surgical mindset, um, but they're inherently different risks when you're going at this from an endovascular perspective. Um, so the group here uh, came up with a grading scheme, um, taking into account what really matters for the endovascular world. So number of pedicles, the more pedicles, the higher the grade. Uh, 
the diameter of those pedicles, as you might expect, the larger the pedicle, the, um, uh, the, the higher the grade. Now, I dislocation, again, eloquence comes in here. Uh, that's perhaps not surprising because if you're gluing something shut, there's definitely a risk that you get some uh, uh, good tissue as well as the bad. Okay. Um, and, you know, kind of putting up, uh, you know, pictures worth a thousand words when you're thinking about what these um, lesions look like for a low, intermediate, high grade. Um, the endovascular ones are kind of look a little bit different than what we consider to be high risk surgically, right? Um, and that's because they're completely different um, uh, issues at play when with the different approaches. Um, I think this is a um, an interesting table, and I'll just point out this sort of middle column, the complications column, um, which is looking at overall complications per rate or grade. And you can see this is these are embolization outcomes for these patients. And when you use the Spetzer Martin, sort of it's all over the place, right? So complications. Um, are high sort of from one to five. But when you consider sort of what's important for endovascular, you can see that low grade tends to have low um, complications, high grade tends to have high complications. And so that this grading scale, um, at least from a faceability standpoint, it makes sense. These are the important things we need to consider. And if we're, tr if we're thinking we want to endovascularly treat a lesion that has a high endovascular grading score, maybe we ought to think twice or really make sure we have a solid indication there because it could very well hurt. Um, so um, again, if or when to treat rupture history is important. Has it already ruptured? Um, what is the risk? What are those, um, those micro and macrovascular um, features that we see that may help us to uh, understand the rupture risk going forward? Um, uh, and then age and comorbidities, life expectancy, if they're six and have a big, bad, and ugly and, uh, AVM, it's very different than if they're 96 and have a big, bad, and ugly AVM. And then the procedural risk. And again, it's combined, combined procedural risk because often we're doing multiple procedures on these folks over time uh, to treat them. Um, thinking about uh, embolization, let's dive in there um, as, uh, as an adjunctive approach first. Um, you don't necessarily need to, uh, to go for broke with these things. You need, uh, there's, there's risk with anything we do. And if you go for a big MCA vessel that's right on the surface and you know that you're going to be going for surgery, um, you're not buying anything, right? You can bipolar that on the way in very easily and eliminate the risk of embolization, gluing a catheter in place, having onyx go where you don't want it to go, you know, just by doing, using your bipolar. What's much more uh, useful to the surgeon is to get the, the tough stuff, the stuff on the backside. So often you'll have feeders coming up from the ventricle and those can be very small vessels that are just gonna bleed like stink and you try to bipolar them and they chase, they run away from you. Those are the red devils that um, Lawton and others talk about. Well, if you glue that, you're doing the surgeon a huge favor and making the surgery a lot safer. Um, those are the ones that you that you generally want to target if you're thinking sort of surgically um, as a surgical adjunct, right? Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.